why are Eastern Europeans slimmer than Western Europeans is the Jody Bunting podcast today. I have a special guest, my lovely friend, Valentina Kuzmenko, who is from Ukraine, but I met her in Egypt. She's a health and fitness coach living in Austria. Hi, Valentina. Hi, Judy. I'm so glad to see you. You're looking so, so great. Love now, the last time you saw me, I was about 150 kilos, which is about 25 stone in the UK. I was big, wasn't I? Yes, you were quite big. I remember that your white shirt that you had at work, it was hardly closing and the buttons were always <laughs> getting out. <laughs> and I actually used to go to the sewing machine man downstairs in the bottom of the hotel, getting to sew up my trousers and things because I was just <laughs> forever popping. But Valentina, the problem we had when we lived in that hotel together, we were all inclusive, weren't we? Yes, it's terrible, in fact. And I remember why I gained weight at times, because when I came to Egypt, I was way slimmer. But that all-inclusive life, it just blow me away I would say so. <laughs> and it wasn't just normal food was it it was like everything was full of sugar everything was full of fat it was like treat food remember the pancakes exactly the pancake station and the pizza and pasta station and they had this oriental restaurant just full of sweets you just cannot cannot stop eating it jesus <laughs> And remember the coffee shop as well. How many times a day did I used to go to the coffee shop and get as a latte or something creamy? It is. It's terrible. I mean, the coffee was so good and everyone drank a lot of it because it's free as well. Oh, Jesus. And because it was so hot, we had to eat a lot of ice cream to stay cold, didn't we? <laughs> <laughs> and drink a lot of alcohol as well. Yes. Yeah. Let's not forget about that. <laughs> but yes, yeah, so the good news is both of us have moved on from that, become fitter, become healthier, which is a great thing. And this is what we wanted to talk about today. Um, so first of all, what I wanted to uh, talk about was your personal uh, fitness story. Because again, back in Egypt, you were kind of a, like myself, we were working as customer service. We weren't really health and fitness at all. So what's kind of your personal experience with health and fitness and what have you done to improve it? Well, it started all actually when I started to work for the cruise line. Yeah. Because we were living in a very limited environment. And you only had there two options what to do. Or you go to the bar, there is like a crew bar only for employees, or you go to the gym. I mean, my first couple of years, I was only going to the bar. But at some point, you just get sick of it and you cannot do that anymore. I'm like, okay, let's try something else. <laughs> yeah. And I started to go to gym. And again, you meet your people there. You meet people, your co-workers who also love going to gym and you build your community and it's getting more and more exciting and uh, you start talking about nutrition, you start making pictures in the mirror in a gym and <laughs> it's getting more fun and it was our culture that times. Um, after I moved to Austria, I would say um, that I had a time when I was too busy with my new life and I gained again, a couple of kilos and I was not happy about it. So I decided, all right, let's do something. So I started to do easy workouts every day and then just limited not very healthy foods. So my weight melted. And um, I also, I think it was like a transformational time in my life. I started to run. I used to hate running before, but when I started to run, I also met my new community of runners yeah. And it became like a really cool hobby, which I still love and I do really with pleasure. So I just transformed my lifestyle slowly without knowing it's going to be this way. And uh, I'm, I live like this right now. And uh, when I started to run, I also quit completely alcohol because I realized that even a little glass of wine in the evening next yeah. day influence my health state i cannot run anymore i don't sleep well i mean i'm aging i'm 32 already <laughs> you look great for 32 by the way i just need to get that out there <laughs> thank you <laughs> yes and uh, that's how it is right now and uh, in my blog i just simply show um how i live 
and maybe in this way someone is getting also inspired so from your biggest kilo wise what has been the difference is it like five kilos 10 kilos or i think it's a uh, 10 kilograms for sure because uh, i would say that that uh, when i quit egypt and i went to ships on the ships i gain again more yeah than when i had in egypt but in egypt i already had a bit extra yeah on the ships i gain again more i think it's also stress uh, and it was a different type of food it's also a very interesting subject because that food was all coming from america united states yeah and the quality of this food is different and uh, i would say the first couple of months i gained even more there and i would say now the difference in weight is for sure 10 kilograms than it was before fantastic which actually brings us on to our subject of this podcast, the whole East versus West. Now, I've spoken before uh, on my podcast about how kind of great the nutrition and the lifestyle is in Egypt. So, for instance, they don't have much money, so they live a very simple life. They actually have a plant-based diet, not through choice, but they can't afford meat. That's the actual truth in places like Egypt. Uh, but when I, I when I was working in Egypt, I obviously saw it was my first experience of Eastern Europeans. There was a lot of Russian, a lot of Ukrainian guests. I got to work with amazing people like yourself. Um, and I, the thing that I noticed was, Valentina, the Eastern Europeans are a lot slimmer and healthier than people from the UK and the West. Why do you think that is? Well, actually, um, I was always thinking about it. Um, I can tell you about my experience as a Ukrainian. Um, I grew up in a village and uh, also in our culture, because we are economically way behind Europe, uh, we don't eat outside that often. Yeah. 99% of the time we eat at home, so it's a home cooking. And uh, we have a lot of local farming. My parents were doing farming just for us, so we had uh, chickens at home. Uh, we were growing some greens, potatoes, so it was uh, kind of healthy food. Yeah, without that extra processed food that we usually get in the restaurants. I mean, I'm sure that I've been working in tourism. I know how restaurants are running and what quality of food they have there. They always prefer the cheapest as possible, especially yeah. with oils or quality of meat. And um, the more food is processed, the more we get fat from it. That's just a fact. And the strangest thing that I experienced in Egypt was uh, we had a, a watermelon station. Remember that when they used to get all the watermelons out and the Ukrainians and the Russians used to run for it. You know, there, there would almost be like the, the Brits would be over at the pancake station fighting to get the pancakes and the Eastern Europeans would be fighting to get the watermelon. So, you know, it's not only that do they, um, like you said, it's kind of normal for them but they actually enjoy this sort of some fresh foods don't they it is i remember uh, at my family table the first thing from the table that was always off was a salad we were fighting for salad <laughs> 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 because uh, before i mean now it's different supermarkets are full with everything but before in the winter time you don't get fresh greens yeah. you can but you would pay a lot for it so it's just not worth it you don't get fresh roots either. So when there is a season for it, we were fighting for that food. <laughs> so again, this is why they were so excited to see the watermelon in Egypt. Because it was like, wow, we don't have that in Ukraine in the winter. Give me some now. I was the same. I remember when I saw strawberries on Egyptian bazaar. Oh my God, I was buying kilograms of them. Strawberries in the winter, how come? <laughs> yes. <laughs> So what did you think then when you kind of, you know, when you went to Egypt, when you've been on the cruise ships as well with the American food, have you ever come across a buffet that hadn't got any fresh food and you had to eat this processed stuff? What did you think? There is a problem that when you um, start eating that processed food, you start liking it because it's addictive. Yeah. It's really difficult. The more you stay away, stay away from it, the better. And how was it on the ships? Um, there were so many stations with processed food. There were always huge lines to get that food. 
and there was a station with salads. It was a dead area, <laughs> the dead zone. <laughs> and for us, I'm not surprised. <laughs> exactly, Americans they don't love salads. Maybe some, but not so many. <laughs> so for us to get the food fast, you just had no choice. You have to go for the salad because you cannot just wait for your chicken wings for one hour in a line. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And for you personally now, do you do you go for a plant-based diet? Do you go for mixed? Or what do you think to the whole debate about meat versus plant-based? Well, actually, I've uh, moved almost a year ago to vegan. Great. I've eaten meats um, and milk products and eggs. Um, there was a lot of reasons why. Uh, one of them is mostly ethical reason. When you work for America, you just arrive to the point that you don't want to eat meat anymore. Because when I grew up uh, at home, I used to see happy chickens running around and having a happy life. But um, the massive production, it's not about that. Yeah. It's something absolutely terrible. Yeah. And you just don't want to, you don't want to be a part of it. And uh, maybe in Europe, it's way better in Austria as well. But still, it's a violence towards animals, and that's what I just don't want to be a part of it. That was the first uh, motivation why I stopped eating meat. And the second one, um, I still believe that it's uh, not the most healthy option for us. And uh, the overall um, drama about the animal proteins, I just overrated. Yeah. Really, really need it. And My... that all the people with protein shakes it just make me crazy. Like, stop drinking that. <laughs> you don't need it. <laughs> My daughter's vegan and, you know, she has pea protein. She works out and she does get enough protein, but she has to obviously plan it a little bit more and make sure she's getting all those beans and pulses and things. So, yeah, my, my eyes are definitely open more now to, to plant-based products. What now, do I don't... What is your nutrition right now? How does it look like? Uh, well, I did some in the, in the UK. We have something called Veganuary, which is where you try and do a whole month in January of just vegan. And I did that. So okay. and I really enjoyed it. But like you just said there on protein, kind of our lives are so, especially when you exercise, our lives are so pushed on protein that I do find it's tricky sometimes just to get enough of protein. So I'm definitely cutting down. At the moment, I'm probably having two vegan meals a day and one with animal products. But generally, I would say a vegetarian meal rather than a carnivore meal, which is good. So I'm eating more plants, which I think is advisable for everybody, isn't it? Absolutely, absolutely. I'm surprised. I know how you used to eat before. Yeah. <laughs> And now me and Valentina used to sit down for breakfast, <laughs> lunch, dinner, afternoon tea, morning <laughs> snack. So Valentina really does know me when it comes to <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> Did we ever used to go to the shop together as well when we finished work at night? We used to go to the bar. That's yeah, we used to go to the bar. <laughs> but I think the alcohol was also one of the big reasons why I gained weight at times because all the sugary cocktails, oh my goodness. Yeah, and although we talk about, you know, this East versus West, and I've said about people queuing up at the buffets and you said at the ships as well, it's kind of a little bit of false sense of security because these people are on holiday. You know, they are there to have a good time and have a treat. However, you can still see the real life, you know, people's natural eagerness coming out, how they live at home as well, wouldn't you say? I agree. Um, I've also noticed when you leave uh, and you always have access to the buffet, at the end of the day, you start to choose the same food every time. The food you actually like. This is um, what I've noticed after myself. And I ended up always eating the same because everything else was just not attractive anymore. When you see you have so much choice, you attempt to choose what you usually eat. Yeah, so that's, that's very true. Now tell me a little bit about Austria, because I, I actually don't know anything about Austria. I've never been there. So what's are the good food options available? I think the best part of Austria when you come here, you do see that happy cows. I've never seen that milkas, real milkas, like they oh, really? show in the They are existing. They really, 
they just uh, relax on the sun, eating grass, chilling. You just drive through the roads and you see them around with that little bell on the neck. <laughs> and you really have impressions that um, ethically they are much more uh, better with animals than what I used to see in America, absolutely. Yeah. And um, here people are very, um, I would say, respecting the privacy and they're respecting the time off. Uh, on the weekend, you are not allowed to be loud. Even you just walk on the street and you want to shout something, someone will stop you and say, hey, it's a weekend. We don't talk loud on a weekend. Wow. <laughs> So yes. holistically, you've really, you know, you've almost loved that lifestyle then. It's nice. It's really nice because you uh, attempt to calm down, to slow down as well. America has an uh, absolutely different speed of life, United States, and I'm glad uh, I'm not living there because it's just a constant burnout. Here is different. Now, you said to me before we started, you went to Austria to study. So mm. big congratulations because you've just graduated last week, haven't you? Well done. Thank you. <laughs> Have you had the ceremony yet where you get to wear the hat and everything? Uh, summer. Because oh, it's in it. summer. Great. Oh, well, we look forward to seeing those photos. What, <laughs> so you. what's the plan now? Are you going to stay in Austria? Are you loving life there? Um, I do. I love the life there. It's a different tradition, absolutely. But uh, I would say it just matching my personality very much. Yes. I, when I've been to US, I was trying to check, can I live here? Do I like it here? And the answer was no. Yeah. Maybe Miami, maybe, but still no, because there's so much uh, working. They really work so much. I just cannot handle it. that the overall tradition of Americans is to really work to burn out. Yeah. And um, I just don't want to be a part of it. <laughs> and the bad news is because they're working so much, they actually have no time to prepare their food or even eat their food, do they? And that's why they have something that they can eat quickly. That's true. And um, have you been to US before or not yet? No. Never. You will remember me when you first time step uh, on in United States in any city and when you enter a supermarket, you will get a shock because of the sizes the sizes of food, they are really giant. It's it's unbelievable. People after you being in Europe, they come to yes, they really have their jar like, because <laughs> like the cereal boxes, they will be like two yeah. kilograms, the chocolate bars, everything like triple sized. And it's already starts from there. You just show to the people, this is your normal size. <laughs> That's what yeah. you should eat. And another problem is really highly processed food. It just everywhere. And it's again, these happy. people are making so much money from processed foods. That's the other issue, isn't it? Yeah, the overall industry. I wouldn't say that we don't have it in Europe. We also have it, the high uh, industry income from processed foods. But I would say we have more choice. Yeah. In US. In US, you really need to put more effort to find something healthy on your plate. How does Austria compare to Ukraine? Would you say um, they're similar? It's really different. Mm. What they eat, um, I love their traditions over Sunday cakes because it's part of, part of a family tradition that they meet uh, with your family on Sunday uh, midday and they have coffee and cake, something similar that you have in England, I guess. <laughs> yeah, you know about the afternoon tea, don't you, <laughs> in England? We used to have it in the hotel in Egypt. Yes, I remember. Yeah, you've been always there. <laughs> Every day I was there, afternoon tea time, 3 p.m. <laughs> yes, absolutely. So uh, I would say that in Austria they uh, put much more um, respect for the family and uh, they really uh, find the time for your family and uh, they build the traditions around it and everybody have to respect it. Uh, they definitely respect much more your private space so no one will ever bother you after work i mean in egypt i had situations when i could just be cut off on my own <laughs> they often be told i'm fired so yeah <laughs> and to be honest this is why they used to make us live in the hotel so we were available 24 hours weren't we valentina 
you were that's true i mean i egypt is another story i need to write a book about it for sure especially <laughs> public the women there when i was not allowed to exit the hotel after 10 p.m <laughs> I, like, what? I remember this ban you were actually banned by security from leaving the hotel wow <laughs> Yes, but I was still living, and when I was coming back, security was already waiting for me on the gate and calling Mahmoud, Mahmoud, <laughs> Valentina at 2 a.m. <laughs> Came back. Where are you? <laughs> now we did. We also did some amazing things in Egypt, didn't we? We remember presenting on the Soho Square stage together. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we were quite active at times. I remember it was a great experience, but it was um, emotionally unbalanced. The one yeah. day you do so good, the next day they just fire you. <laughs> yeah. And, and this is, <laughs> unfortunately, this is kind of the the Arab, I don't know whether it's mentality, it's just kind of the normal behavior, isn't it, in the Arab world, unfortunately. Like you said, it's just not balanced. It's very unbalanced. And, you know, our manager, we had both of us, uh, both of us had the same manager. One day he was uh, completely open-hearted and was ready to give you everything he has. And next day he would just yell at you until you would just be un left unconscious. <laughs> so... He used to call us a family and he was very much like a father, don't you think? <laughs> it felt like that because he was yelling at me more than my father. Yes. <laughs> okay, a bad father. We'll call him a bad father, not a good father. But another day he was super kind and helping yeah. so much and giving out everything he has. So, like this. You know, the thing that I personally, you know, I fell in love with some Egyptians because their hearts were so big and they're so generous. And if you were, if you did have a problem, they would really help you, wouldn't they? Yes, that's true. If they, um, what I've noticed from Egyptians, mm, for me as a woman, if they take me as a sister, they would really take care of me. Yeah. But if they see me as a sexual object, oh God, you have to run. This because is they when they've got their, their claws in you. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, then just, they just take you differently then, yeah. Now, you've got a fantastic Instagram page where, which is basically your health and fitness coaching. Now, we've just been discussing most of it is in uh, Ukrainian, but you can click that Google Translate button, which magically turns everything into what language you want it to be. Um, so what, what is your basic fitness advice for other people that want to get fitter? Um, I would say uh, you, you ask questions how this food arrives to your plate. Uh, yeah. Try to give reference to the food that as less as possible people had touched before you eat it. Yeah. Starting from it was raised somewhere until someone gathered it, someone sorted, someone sell it, someone cook from it. All of this adds extra, 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 extra hands. So the more hands touch your food, the less nutritional it is. So I always um, encourage people to cook at home yeah, as often as possible and uh, just choose the food wisely. What, um, what should people be doing in the gym? Do you think people should go to the gym? Do you think they should be walking outdoors? They should, should they just be doing yoga? What do you think? Um, what I've noticed for myself is that um, you can do very little when you force yourself. At some point, you will just give up anyways. So um, my advice is try to find what we really like. It doesn't matter where it is. As long as you are moving and you are enjoying it, you will continue doing it for the lifetime. So this is the main motivation. That's how it happened to me with running. I always come back to running because at the time when I enjoy myself. I don't need any motivation. I don't need any encouragement. I just love it. That's why I do it. And I'm guessing there's some nice places to run in Austria, is there? Oh, it's so beautiful. You definitely have to come. <laughs> yeah, I will definitely visit. Sounds amazing. 
Now, when it comes to lifestyle, because I'm a big, um, you know, a lot of people who are trying to lose weight, trying, you know, they focus on food, they slow focus on fitness. But actually, I be really believe in lifestyle. You know, it's so important to sleep and do things like this. So what do you think people should do lifestyle wise as well to increase their fitness? Sleep really plays a very big role. I agree with that because uh, we tend to think that if we uh, sleep too little, uh, we can get that energy from food. So we try to eat more, so we feel more energized, but it doesn't work this way. Nothing can replace the sleep, nothing. So if you feel tired, just take a nap. <laughs> don't grab a cupcake, it's not gonna help. <laughs> or don't grab a coffee as well to wake yourself back up. You're right, you know, just going for that little power nap can really help, can't it? Power napping is amazing. I used to use it on ships a lot. Because we've been working like horses or like donkeys over there. I don't know how to describe it. And you usually have like a little break between your shifts. You just go to your bed and you black out. You black out for half an hour. You wake up, you're still alive, you go back to work. <laughs> and in a lot of hot countries, because a lot of Egyptians used to do that, have a little sleep in the afternoon. And for health, it's good, isn't it? It's really good. And it really powers you off, uh, powers you on very much. And it you start to eat less. That is also true. Another part is water. Try to get as much as possible pure water. Try to quit all I'll that sort of. Have a drink now, oils. Valentina. Yes, well, very well, well done. I also have my glass. Cheers. Yes, try to quit the sugary drinks because they bring no nutrition at all. It's just a waste of calories, waste of sugar. Yeah, and uh, just uh, follow the rule: eat only when I'm hungry. Don't eat because I'm bored. Don't eat yeah. because everyone eats. Don't eat because food will spoil in our time. <laughs> <laughs> Only eat when you're hungry and stop eating when you're full. If you follow this rule, you will never have problems with extra weight. Never. This is so true. Now let's talk vegan foods. My favorite vegan food is avocado. What about you? <laughs> I have plenty of them here. <laughs> oh dear, you've got some ready to go. Great. I love them. You know what I also discovered um, is the root plants, like um, sweet potatoes. Uh, there are a lot of others, like topinambur, I guess. I'm not sure if those are the right words in English, but those are different root veggies as a potato, because I think we only know about potato, yeah. but potato doesn't do any good for us either. But all the other root uh, veggies, they are amazing. And there is so many choice of them I never heard about. And But when you cook them, you really discover completely new flavors for yourself. And that's something that your gut really enjoys. So I strongly recommend to try to go to the supermarket and grab a new veggie that you never heard before and try to cook it and <laughs> try to find out how it tastes. Because we have parsnips, beetroots, uh, turnips. Oh, okay. Exactly, exactly. All of those ones, they are amazing and they're really, really healthy for us. But as you said, you know, potato is the national dish in the UK. So this is so <laughs> annoying. <laughs> Everybody, a lot of people eat potatoes at every single meal, even breakfast. In Ukraine as well. Yes, we raised a lot of potatoes ourselves and we used to store it for the winter time. And sometimes this is the only food you have available at winter. So yeah. you just eat potato every day. <laughs> but we are living a different century right now. We have yes. access to so many foods. It's different. So if you can choose, choose something better for yourself. Right now to sum up everything we've talked about today. So our top three health and fitness tips. What would you think is your top three tips, Valentina? Um, I would say do not go extreme. Like there are so many times people throw themselves into full healthy lifestyle, just completely changing everything and going to extreme, but then they give up because it's too difficult. Or you throw yourself into completely unhealthy lifestyle and just burn everything away like hell, I don't care anymore. Just try to balance, be somewhere in the middle, try 80% of your time, stay healthy, another 20% do the things that you also enjoy, but they're not that healthy anymore. So look for the healthy balance and um, try to enjoy what you do. Life should not be so much about suffering. Being fit and healthy, it's not about suffering. Try to find the food that you like. Try to find activities you enjoy and then you will have 
you would never have to be anymore to struggle to give yourself housing. That's two. That's enough. <laughs> <laughs> it really is enough because you've actually said the really important things there. And, and going back to the beginning, when you said when you started running and going to the gym, I think the fact that you found community, you know, that was the, the most important thing, isn't it? That really helps people push on. Yeah, I think that's what happened to you also, why you stay so slim and you remain this way, because that uh, group you are right now, that really that keeps you engaged and um, you just feel a part of it right now. And that's what... That's what keeps us stay yeah. on the same. And my group became so strong, I turned it into my business. You know, it's now my job because my community through weight loss was so strong. So you're right. Yeah, now, amazing. talking, you, you said there about the 80-20 rule, you know, 20% of time you can enjoy yourself. Now, in a, we've got Easter coming up. I don't know about there in Austria, but the, all the shops in the UK right now are just full of Easter eggs. Uh, hot cross buns which is kind of an Easter bread so what are you looking forward to having at Easter is it chocolate actually not for me Easter was never associated with chocolate is that something I, I think I taught from you the chocolate bunny for us, <laughs> it was, <laughs> for us it was always about the colored eggs like actual chicken eggs that they are boiled yeah. And they are colored and it's a tradition how you cook it together with the family how you color it kids love it and then on a easter table what you do you have to fight with those eggs i don't know do you do it in london as well or in no. UK? like you each of the family member he takes one egg and then you would need to hit each other with those eggs and uh, which eggs breaks that one lose oh so really? the strongest egg win yeah so it's a game <laughs> <laughs> that sounds the strongest win. That sounds great, doesn't it? Exactly. So it was like a family fun activity for us, and that's what keeps me attached to the Easter traditions. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I do love chocolate, but what I've done this year is just bought a small one, a very very small one. So again, I can have it in moderation. Wow. Now, thank you so much, Valentina. Where can people find you online? Um, so I do have my Instagram page. Um, I'm not sure if you put this podcast somewhere, I can leave the link over there so people can access. It is in Ukrainian, so. However, you can translate if you want to and you can stay in touch with me. And please send me messages. I speak English so I can reply you. So <laughs> that's all right. Great, <laughs> wonderful. Well, thank you for joining us today, Valentina. Uh, sending you lots of love to Austria and hopefully I'll see you there soon. Absolutely. Love. Right. <laughs>